Hi, I'm Sherry Youngward. Welcome to the Quiet Place podcast. This is a place for you to come up for air anytime, day or night, and find a quiet moment of replenishment and rest. I am so glad you are here. If you would like to hear about upcoming gatherings, new music, and online women's events, which I offer once a month, please join my email list. Also, if you would like to help support this podcast through a one-time gift or through the gift exchange, which is a monthly support option where I in turn send you a monthly gift, thank you so much. You can do all these things at sherryyoungward.com. Thanks again. This is the 14th episode in a series called We Take Our Turns. I'm going through a book I wrote with that title. Sometimes I'll read word for word and then share extended thoughts as they are relating to me and to us today. You can listen in any order you please. This episode is dedicated to Debbie D. In this episode, I will revisit the idea of Christ being at home in our heart. Last week's podcast was also on the subject. But the question has been stirring in me. When and how did the change occur where He's not only more at home in my heart, but I am more at home with him in my heart. Actually, I am most at home with him in my heart. And what do we do if we feel stagnant or distant? Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts living within you as you trust in Him. May your roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. Another translation says, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. The idea for dwell is a closeness and comfort that means at home, settled in. It's a breathtaking prayer Paul prayed while he was in prison. It's a prayer I still see unfolding in my life. Maybe you feel the same. I'll read Ephesians 3, verses 14 through 17. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of His glory He may grant you to be strengthened with power through His Spirit, in your inner being. I can't count how many times I've read this verse on this podcast. I can't think of a minute of a day when I don't want to be strengthened with power through His Spirit in my inner being. We can get so busy and our minds so crowded, we forget to ask. As used by Paul, the inner man or inner being means the mind or soul considered as being renewed or strengthened by the Holy Spirit. How is your inner being? Can you use some strength and power outside of what you possess on your own? I'm going to give a little pause, a few seconds of time to consider how you're doing in your soul and your spirit. Time to welcome his help and strength. Lord, please strengthen us. We need your power your wisdom. We need you. Come renew, refresh, and fill us. And I pray that Christ will be more and more at home in your hearts. What comes into your mind when you think of being at home somewhere? 
The first words that come to my mind are welcome, invited, free to be yourself. In my many years of travel, I have stayed in so many places, hotels, homes, conference centers. I remember traveling once with my friend Debbie. We were on the East Coast somewhere, and we arrived at a house late at night. We had never met these people. I think they gave us instructions so we could let ourselves in because it was so late. What I remember for sure was the cold milk and fresh homemade cookies in each of our rooms with a crayon written welcome note from a child's hand. I can still see them there under the soft light of a bedside lamp. This was a long time ago. This was before there were one million options for insulated cups. They somehow had our glasses of milk covered and on ice. This was also back when I ate things like cookies without thinking about a big dose of insulin. The point is, though this was a long time ago, I still remember how welcome this family made us feel. Before we even had the chance to meet them, they thought ahead, they planned, and carried out their plan, and it worked. I also know what it feels like to be or feel unwelcome, completely uncomfortable, and in the way. It's awful and awkward. It's the opposite of at home, settled in and free to be yourself. I remember very well when I first invited, welcomed, begged Jesus into my heart. I tell the story in episode number 86 called Two Birthdays. I was 18 when I asked him into my wreck of a heart, but he didn't hesitate. He still doesn't hesitate when we welcome him into any part of our lives, even the most messy. It only glorifies him when he does for us what we can't do for ourselves. Do you feel stagnant, like your relationship with him has fallen to the wayside? It happens. Do you want more? Something I have learned is the impact of planning time with friends. I write it on my calendar because I'm not in high school anymore and I don't see my friends every day in class. My sister and I watch her grandkids, which are my grandniece and grandnephew, every other week. My sister lives an hour away from me and I love any time I can spend with her. Often though, at the end of our time with the kids, we look at each other and say, well, we really didn't get to talk, but it was good to see you. Then we both drive home. We are together, but busy with the kids. We love the kids. So, we have to plan phone calls or solo visits when we can really talk. With Jesus in my heart, we are together, but I get busy and distracted. I have a sense he is with me throughout the day, but I still need to plan time where I make eye contact with him. This is where the change happens. This is where roots go down deep into his love. We may welcome someone into our home with cold milk and cookies, but if we want to get to know them, it takes time, planned, and purposeful time. I'm going to continue sharing some thoughts and then I'll read from Ephesians 3 verses 16 through 19 and 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verses 16 and 17. So, take a nice deep breath and settle in 
while I talk to you some more and read to you. There are metaphors of Christ at home in our hearts and how we let him into some rooms, but not others. I remember feeling that way. I feared surrendering every part of my life because surely he would want me to move to some lonely country and eat grasshoppers or something. Year after year of walking with him and witnessing his faithfulness through life's ups and downs, I am much more at home with him now. And even when all around me is thunder and lightning, he stays. He always stays. He is more careful and loving to us than we are to ourselves. It takes years and years and days and days and hours and hours to learn to trust him. But he's in it for the long haul. My friend Linda sent me this quote from Amy Carmichael. Sometimes, when we read the words of those who have been more than conquerors, we feel almost despondent. I feel that I shall never be like that. But they won through step by step, by little bits of wills, little denials of self, little inward victories by faithfulness in very little things. They became what they are. No one sees these little hidden steps. They only see the accomplishment, but even so, those small steps were taken. There is no sudden triumph, no spiritual maturity. That is the work of the moment. Faithfulness in very little things, little bits of will, little denials of self, little hidden steps, planned time with God. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light, momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all.